All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am at home sick, but we are still going to be discussing air pressure and actually moving on to air pressure systems, which are much larger systems, and they actually are going to influence our weather and our weather patterns, so that's what we're going to lead into at the end of this week and next week. But let's do a little bit of review. Which diagram here do you think has the greater density? So remember, density is mass over volume. So the volumes of both boxes are the same, but obviously the mass is different. The one on the left has the much larger mass, and the one on the right has the smaller mass. So for the diagram that has the greater density, that would be right here on the left. Now for greater pressure, remember density and pressure are best friends, and if you have more molecules, you're also going to have a greater density, and that's going to have the greater pressure. So actually the ones with the greater pressure and greater density is both the one on the left. Now in nature, nature doesn't like to be unbalanced like this, so it wants to become balanced or at equilibrium. So remember, pressure flow from high to low. So pressure flow from high to low, that's the first part of this problem. So on our diagram, pressure is going to go from this high pressure to this low pressure. So it will flow from high to low. Pressure flow from high to low. So there's our review, and we're going to be needing this background information to get into our air pressure systems. So why are we talking about air pressure again? Well, we know the basics, and we're going to be reviewing the different factors that affect air pressure, but we also need to know this because it's going to lead into our weather forecasting. <clears throat> All right, so a little review here. Remember, we have three different factors. We have temperature, moisture, and elevation. And remember the relationship we talked about yesterday. If temperature increases pressure decreases. It's an indirect relationship or an inverse relationship. And remember, pressure and density do the same thing, so that one decreases as well. For water vapor or moisture, we know that if moisture increases, pressure decreases. Again, that same uh, inverse relationship. Density and pressure being best friends do the same thing. And with elevation, the higher up you go, then the lower the pressure is and the lower the density is. So remember that those three factors are affecting air pressure. And if I increase any one of them, temperature, moisture, elevation, pressure and density are going to decrease. If I do the opposite and lower temperature, moisture and elevation, pressure and density will increase because of that indirect, <coughs> excuse me, in uh, the relationship between those factors and pressure. All right, now with your pop can lab, I saw a lot of your guys' hypothesis that it was the pop can was going to explode. I honestly don't think I'd still have my job if I let you guys blow up pop cans. What actually happened, excuse me, was that the can imploded, which meant it went inside. So remember, the temperature, you raise the temperature and you raise the moisture level inside the pop can. So ultimately what you did was you created a very, very low pressure inside that pop can and that then had the high pressure on the outside and because we know pressure flow from high to low that can imploded rather than exploded. So if you were trying to explode a can you would have to create a high pressure on the inside and low pressure on the outside because it would go from high to low and then would explode. All right, so for pressure systems, we also call them pressure cells. There's two different types, a high pressure cell and a low pressure cell, or a high pressure system and a low pressure system. So we're first going to start talking about a high pressure system. A high pressure system is called an anticyclone. The term anti means not, so it is not a cyclone, and the reason for that is because the winds are rotating clockwise, so the way a clock moves, and they're going outward from the center because the center is going to be a high pressure center and so we know that it goes from high to low so it's going to go clockwise and out meaning an anti or not cyclone and in the this is all in the northern hemisphere where we live it would be reverse in the southern hemisphere but we're not going to worry about that so just remember that high pressure systems they move clockwise and out from the central point what they bring for high pressure so if pressure is up Remember, temperature is down, 
moisture is down and density <coughs> does the same thing as pressure it's up. So here's how I get the cold, dry, dense air. Because if temperature goes down, pressure goes up. Moisture goes down, pressure goes up. And pressure and density do the same thing. Now if I have high pressure or high density, I'm going to have sinking air. And that air is going to sink because there is, it's more dense. Cold air is more dense, therefore it sinks. And it tends to have a little bit lighter of winds. So when you have high pressure systems that you hear on the news, you're actually going to have some fair weather. All right, so with high pressure systems or high pressure cells, like I mentioned before, it's gonna be associated with what we call fair weather. So that usually means clear skies, gentle winds, a pretty nice day. So with a high pressure system, when it approaches an area, the barometer is going to rise. And that's because the pressure is going higher and higher and higher. So the barometer, remember barometers measure air pressure, it will rise as that high pressure system or cell approaches. Now, the weather we kind of see changes depending on the season. In the summertime, a high pressure system or cell is going to have clear skies, so then it's nice and sunny, uh, probably a gentle breeze, maybe even a heat wave because there's so much sun coming through. In the winter time, because of those clear skies, it's not trapping in any heat and it actually brings colder weather just because that heat isn't being locked in from the clouds. But again, still clear skies and relatively gentle, calm winds. So let's take a look here. I want you to see that this is what a high pressure cell looks like. And what you can see is that remember it is going clockwise. So the way a clock goes and outward. And because it's doing that, you don't see anything really like nasty around it. Like if you look at this low pressure cell, which what we're gonna look at next, you can see all this well, rain, snow, sleet, that bad weather. Around high pressure system, all of that gets pushed out of the way because it's dense air and it's moving it outwards from that central location. But now we're gonna talk about low pressure systems, which then bring kind of that nasty weather with it. All right, so low pressure systems or cells, they are called now a cyclone. A cyclone, remember the high pressure cell or system is called an anticyclone. This one's now a cyclone, and that's because it is moving counterclockwise. And counterclockwise is opposite the way a clock goes, and it's going inward. And that's because it has low pressure. So lower pressure, lower density is going to rise into that middle area. So with warmer temps, with more moisture, we're going to have low pressure and low density. <coughs> Excuse me. And so with that low pressure, low density, that's why we have that rising air. And this is actually the reason why we get bad weather is because that rising air is going to create turbulence and make our atmosphere really unstable. And that's why we're going to have bad weather. And that's what's going to bring us to our strong winds as well. All right, so now this low pressure system or cell, because of that rising air, we associate it with, you know, quote unquote, bad weather. And when I say bad weather, I'm referring to clouds, some high winds, stormy kind of weather with some precipitation. So whether that's rain in the summer or it's snow in the winter, and the barometer is going to fall as this low pressure system or cell approaches because it's going, the barometer, remember again with air pressure, is going to go down, down, down with the low pressure and so it's going to fall as that pressure cell approaches. So now let's take a look at our low pressure systems or cells on this map. So there's four low pressure cell centers, and you can see that each one of them has, well, these lines coming off of them, and these lines are called fronts, and we're going to learn about those next week, but it also brings all this nasty weather with it, and so we'll see precipitation, rain, we're going to look at, you can see these lines 
those are called isobars and that shows how the pressure is changing so you can see that it's changing very quickly around those lows and not changing very fast around the highs so just remember high pressure pushes all the stuff away have generally fair weather low pressure cells sucks it all in unstable nasty weather all right, pressure differences. Sometimes people can, people can feel when the pressure is actually falling um, because like their bones ache. And so I used to have my granny say, I can tell when a storm's coming because I can feel it in my bones. And some people can. They can actually feel those pressure changes within the atmosphere. Um, but remember here, if we have two places of different pressure, so if I have one with a high pressure and one with a low pressure, pressure flow, from high to low, that is going to result in wind. And we are going to be talking about winds tomorrow on Thursday. Uh, pressure gradients now. When we're talking about the differences in pressure, we will have a pressure gradient. And that's talking about the spaces between these isobars. So an isobar is a line of equal pressure on, an, on a weather map. So this would be one pressure. And we'll just say that it is... 1016 and here is another pressure and we'll say that's 1020 and so anything on this line is going to be at the pressure 1020 and anything here is going to be at 1016 and so the pressure gradient is talking about how close or far away these pressure lines these isobars are because if they're closer together that means pressure is changing very quickly and if they're farther apart that means pressure is changing very slowly. All right, so pressure gradients, when we have a weak pressure gradients, it means that the isobars are very far apart. And that means that pressure is changing slowly and we get a very kind of a nice day. So we generally see weak pressure gradients around high pressure systems <coughs> or high pressure cells. And so we get that gentle breeze or no wind. So weak pressure gradients, they're far apart, air pressure changing slowly pretty nice calm weather. When the pressure gradient is steep, which is usually around low pressure cells or systems, this means that the isobars are very close together. And that means pressure is changing very quickly and we tend to have very strong winds because if pressure is going from high to low, this changes very fast and we get our very strong, strong winds. And so this is kind of that negative or bad weather. All right, so looking at this map, you can see the pressure gradient. So look around this low. You can see that the isobars, they're in white, how close they are together. And what that means, again, is that pressure is changing very, very quickly. And all of it is being sucked into that middle point, and that's why we have that really bad weather. So that is where we have our steep pressure gradient. Now around this high... Look at how far away the isobars are. So pressure is changing very slowly. We have that very gentle pressure gradient <clears throat> where we're going to have that nicer, calmer weather. Okay, this is just a different weather map. Take a look at this low up here on the right. You can see the isobars in yellow are very close. So again, very steep pressure gradient, nasty weather. We're around all of these highs. You can see how, well, these ones don't even have pressure pretty much around them. But you can see that it's changing very slowly. And therefore, you're going to have pretty nice, calm weather all in that whole central area of the United States. All right, now for this next part, we're going to be looking at your pressure mapping worksheet. And so I'm going to work through the first couple with you so that you know kind of what to do and how to set it up so that you can do the back on your own. So it says for the directions, follow the procedure below to complete the map and answer the questions pertaining to the map. So number one, we're drawing the isobars on the map below. So it says to start with the uh, 1024 millibar and then add in 1020 etc. So remember isobars are equal lines of pressure but they can't they're like a to topographic map that they don't overlap and they can't cross each other. So if we start with a 1024 we're going to start here and we just basically connect the numbers. So those are all of my 1024s and now we'll go to the 1020s 
and you're going to connect them just like that. So it's basically, yeah, like connect the dots, but connect the numbers. And so then continue on. Go ahead and pause it right now. See if you can get the rest of them. I'm going to go through it with you, but I want you to try it on your own right now. So pause and come back when you're done. All right, to get all the rest of the numbers, we have 10, 16 here. 10, 16, 10, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. 10, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 10, 08. All right, so you noticed that I did not connect the 10, 16s right here. And the reason for is because we don't really know what's happening up in Canada. And so if you don't have that information, then don't worry about connecting anything there. Okay, so here's our isobars. And what we're going to see then is we have equal lines of pressure. So the first thing for number two now says, can you identify the high and the low? So the pressure with high is greater surrounding air and the pressure low has the lower than the surrounding air. So for 2A, label the high with a blue H. So we are looking at either 1024 or 1008. So 1024 has our high. So we label that with a blue H and 1008 is our low, and we label that with a red L. All right, so now we have one and two done, so we have our isobars, and we have our high pressure and our low pressure centers identified. Now for number three, we're gonna see what kind of weather Ohio is experiencing. So Ohio is this state right here, and it's right near a low pressure cell. So what you remember is that it is a cyclone, so it is counterclockwise, and it is moving inward, and it has very low pressure. So with that, the air is rising, it's very turbulent, it's going to have some pretty bad weather. And I want you to be specific on what, does it, what do I mean by bad weather. Does that mean sunny days? Does that mean clouds? Does that mean rain? What does quote-unquote bad weather mean for number three? And then what pressure system is responsible for that? It's the one that's right next to Ohio. And so you can write that down for number four. Number five now is asking about the state of Utah. So Utah is right here. And for Utah, for number five, what kind of weather is Utah experiencing? And it's a high pressure cell. So it's an anticyclone. So it's going clockwise and out. So remember what kind of pressure or excuse me, weather goes with high pressure systems. And so you're going to write that down for number five, and then pressure system responsible for that is R high for number six. Now for number seven, it says in the northern hemisphere, the wind blows clockwise around centers of high pressure, and the wind blows counterclockwise around the lows, but it's opposite in the southern, so we're not going to really worry about that because we're in our northern hemisphere. So it's actually asking you to draw arrows around the high and the low. So I'm going to do that in green because I already did it in black. But remember for a high pressure system, that is an anticyclone and moving clockwise. So you're going to have the arrows going in the clockwise direction. And then around the low, it's, an ant or it's a cyclone, so it's going counterclockwise. So you're going to have your arrows going opposite the clock goes. So that's our number seven. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how these pressure systems move across the United States. So our pressure systems, they start over here and they're moving in this direction. So if they're moving from left to right, they're really moving from west to east. And so when we see weather like in the Dakotas, we can kind of figure out what's going to be coming towards Minnesota because it's going to be moving from west to east. So imagine for number eight that you live in El Paso, Texas. So Texas. And you are going to be telling me how the pressure is changing. So is the pressure going to rise because it has a high pressure system approaching or is it going to fall because it has a low pressure system approaching? And so you look to the left and we can see that it is a high pressure, so it will rise because of the high pressure. And number nine just describes which way the pressure systems are moving across the United States.
So that's the whole front side of this pressure mapping worksheet. But if you look at the back, you pretty much are going to be just filling out a different map on the top and then looking at what kind of weather you're going to see for the rest of it. Make sure you use your notes because they will help you and I want you to get the questions correct. And make sure you're using your time wisely. When you are done completing this, because this is due tomorrow on Thursday, I would like you to either be silently reading your Jerk California book or you are on Study Island working individually and silently. So hopefully I feel better and I will see you on Thursday. See ya!